Now, in terms of requirement for both the campuses, you can see here. Sorry. Okay. So now if you guys can see, uh, for PG, generally we need 60% or above in the undergraduate degree, if, or 55% uh, or above in the four-year undergraduate degree. So if a student is doing a bachelor's degree in engineering or something like this, then 55% or above is fine. But if they are doing a bachelor's degree, which is three years, then we need 60%. Uh, uh, we can also give English waiver but it is only for the approved boards. So 65 and above from those approved boards can give you an IELTS waiver, but it's not a guaranteed thing because university can, university can give a condition to any student they want because the university reserves the right uh, for giving the condition. Uh, it can happen, even this can happen. So for example, if a student has applied already, has got an IELTS waiver, but a uh, student was talking to somebody in the university, and university realize, okay, the student's English is not great, and then they can put a condition of IELTS. So university reserves the right, okay? Uh, okay, and, but there are certain university from where we can accept three-year degree with 55%, okay? Uh, unless they are applying for health and life sciences courses. So such as Delhi University, Mumbai University, Kolkata University, Chennai, or uh, Madras University, Anna University, Amity University, uh, Andhra Pradesh University, Aligarh Muslim University, Pune uh, University, Bangalore, and JNQ. These are the only universities where we, from where we can accept um, a three years degree with 55% marks. Then we need IELTS 6.5 with no band less than 5.5. Uh, some of the courses will have higher IELTS requirement as well as mandatory IELTS requirement, which are in HLS and journalism, okay? For undergraduate courses, overall 60, 60, uh, 60 to 65% in most of the courses. Uh, for business courses, overall 60 to 65%. And these are the requirements which I don't have to explain. Engineering, again, uh, 55 and all these things. However, some of the courses will have high requirements, probably 65 or above. In some cases, 70 or 75 and above. So it depends on what course you are applying, but most of the courses, 65 is a good percentage. Again, you can get an IELTS waiver with 65% and uh, from the approved boards, okay? Plus IELTS is mandatory in some of the courses like HLS and uh, journalism. Sorry, this is going. Just a second. Okay. Uh, now the online application process, if you can see, uh, it's pretty simple. You, uh, sorry, offline application process. You download the form, uh, you fill the application, sign it as per the passport, scan it, uh, scan the completed form, email the form, uh, create a new email, attach the application form, um, attach all the documents which you have, send it to southasia.io at coventry.ac.uk. Um, receive an automatic email uh, immediately, then you'll, within three days time, you'll receive your application number, and within three to four weeks time, you'll get a conditional offer letter. Now, online application, visit this uh, link, or on any course page, you will see apply for this course option. You click on that, register, create your account, fill the basic details, uh, confirm your account on your, on your email, which we'll be sending a link, um, um, then you can see your application number immediately. That's the biggest benefit. When you submit an offline application, you don't get an application number immediately, but when an online, you get an application number immediately, uh, attach all the documents, submit the form, and receive a confirmation email immediately with your application number, okay? And offer with the same thing. Now, approved boards from where we can give an IELTS waiver. So these are the approved boards. Uh, so all India boards, which include CBSC, ICSC, IB, A-level, these kind of boards. Then we have got uh, Andhra Pradesh board, Karnataka board, Kerala board, Maharashtra state board, Tamil Nadu, uh, Uttarakhand, and West Bengal. Apart from that, any other board uh, will not get an IELTS waiver, okay? Uh, we also take an interview in the process. 
uh, Coventry. Uh, so once you get a conditional offer letter, you will have to take uh, a credibility interview. Uh, it, it's very simple. Um, once you have met all the conditions, you are required to uh, send an email on this email address or our admissions team will automatically get in touch with you once you have met all the conditions. We can only conduct the interview six months in advance. So for example, if you're going for September intake, then we can conduct the interview uh, after the month of April. But if you're going for January intake, we'll start the interview probably from the month of July, okay? Uh, and generally we suggest uh, students should make the payment once they clear the interview because if they fail, uh, then there will be a refund process. So it, it's a process that's why we suggest. What do we expect in the credibility interview? We want to understand the motivation of the student, why they want to go to the UK, um, how it is linked to their previous studies and uh, why they have selected this program, how it will help them in their program, why this particular university, why this particular course, how they will fund their studies and all these kind of things, okay? Um, we can do a, dedi a separate credibility interview uh, training if in case it's needed once the students have the offer. Uh, now, how will I fund my studies in the UK? That's one of the major questions students ask. And um, UK does offer a lot of funding opportunities apart from your own uh, money, okay? So the one is self-funded, okay? Um, so you can um, see self-funded as loan and financial institutions, or you can take, say, uh, you can, make the tuition fee from the savings or other family income. So that's self-funded. Sponsored university scholarships, part of full, external scholarship, part of full, government loans. So Indian government also give loans, uh, government sponsorship, Indian government sponsor international, uh, sorry, studies, uh, loans from private institutions. For example, Tata Foundation is one of the example and corporate sponsorship. So for example, if you're uh, working at, uh, for a company, they can sponsor your studies, okay? So these are some of the examples of types of funding in the UK. How to get a sponsorship. So these are some of the things which you have to remember. Scholarships are not only academic based. There are a lot of things which we consider in the scholarship like sports, potential of the student, what the student will do in the future if we fund them, how, how they will use that to um, make changes in their particular field and all these kind of things. Uh, future ideas. Um, and very important thing, do not copy the ideas of somebody else. Highlight your unique points. Uh, always make sure, uh, always understand the competition is global. Do not apply for scholarships randomly. Read the eligibility criteria. So it's very, very important. Most of the time it happens students apply for scholarships randomly. So for example, if there is a scholarship by Greenpeace and you are doing a research in cancer, like trying to cure the cancer, even if you are doing everything in that area, but the Greenpeace, they have different kind of agenda altogether. They will not be giving you scholarship. You will be getting scholarship from the foundations who are curing the cancer or who are working towards the cancer. So that is the thing you need to understand, okay? Uh, do not ignore the optional area. That is also very important. Most of the students ignore that, but you, according to the university, it is a place where you can give us more information which will make your application stronger. 